What an interesting topic. Uh, it was based on a very interesting op-ed in the journal. More men in prime working ages don't have jobs. One of the experts, of course, that was quoted in this was John Hopkins University's Robert Moffitt, who happens to be my guest today. Robert, thanks for taking the time. Glad to be here. Listen, you know, I guess what jumped out at me is that, first of all, as an expert, you're surprised by this dynamic, but yet it's chronicled as being chronic, going on for a long time. Can you explain what exactly is going on and why you're surprised? What I'm surprised is that the uh, employment rate, uh, as we call it, the number of men and women employed has simply not been part of the recovery we've experienced since the bottom of the recession in June 2009. Ordinarily, uh, more employment uh, uh, rises after the bottom of the recovery. Uh, but in this case, even though GDP has resumed its growth for the past four years, the employment rate, the percentage of men and women who are actually have jobs, has not uh, risen at all since 2009, uh, when it was bottomed out at about uh, 60, oh, sorry, about 58 percentage of all men and women uh, uh, working. Uh, it's still at about 50, uh, 59 percent. Hardly changed at all. Very unusual. Never uh, happened in any previous recession. Well, Robert, being an expert, let me ask you a very simple question. If I came to you and said, listen, I'm trying to fix this problem, I'm from the government, I'm here to help, if I target the unemployment rate as the number that will tell me if I'm successful in whatever programs I'm pursuing, do you think, based on your expertise, that that's a good idea? Uh, though, in fact, the un unemployment rate in this case is not a good indicator of the health of the labor market. Uh, the unemployment rate has been steadily falling, which is good news. Of course, we'd like to see it falling. And last month, it fell all the way to 6.6 percent, which is good news. However, the problem is that the reason the unemployment rate is falling is that fewer people are looking for jobs. They're dropping out of the labor force. It's not because they're obtaining jobs. The percentage well, of people Robert, actually Robert, with jobs. Robert, the reason I asked, let me interrupt you. The reason I asked is because we live in a time where when smart people that are associated with government say something, we're all supposed to consider it a fact and not kick the tires. So whether it's, you know, climate change, president said it's settled, or health care, period, or in this instance, the Federal Reserve, and I don't know if you're aware of those programs, one of the big reasons, of course, that they're doing a lot of what they're doing, like quantitative easing, is because they're trying to maximize employment. Why is it that studies like yours and your expertise are never brought to the table and nobody seems to be worried that this chronic problem isn't getting resolved or even looked at through the correct lenses? Well, it's just not, you're, you're absolutely correct. It's not in the public eye. The other positive indicators are naturally the ones that uh, the uh, current administration is talking about the most. These others are just a very difficult problem. In fact, no one quite understands why we've had such a jobless recovery with employment not g uh, growing at the same rate GDP is, with uh, investment and other indicators have been coming back, but employment has not. It's a jobless recovery, and unfortunately, we don't really know why. We suspect this is part of a long-run trend, a long-run trend away from manufacturing, right, away from listen, those middle-class jobs. I'm going to have to put the brakes there, but I'd like to have you back and maybe when you come back in about a month, you can have three things that you might suggest to the Federal Reserve or the government that they could do to actually make a real difference in how many people are working.